Ever since he came into our lives, he became one of the family. But now he's gone. With Fun Recollections memorial plaques and website, we can upload all our photos and videos of him. Visit FondRecollection.com today and cherish the happy memories of your loved ones. Chapter 9. The Media Storm. India Davis could feel her life flash before her eyes as the charge nurse and security staff walked into the trauma ICU. They looked like they meant serious business, with radios attached to their belts and high-quality cell phones in their hands. The charge nurse ran to dial in the ICU emergency code. Everyone was panicking and trying to remain calm at the same time. It was quite a paradox. The TICU was now flooded with people. Multiple trained nurses from other departments stormed into the unit. The room was buzzing like a hive full of angry bees, and India knew that she was about to get stung at any moment. The security director was aghast, but acting came at the same time. He had cordoned off the area and secured the unit. Nobody could go in or out without his express permission. Only the ICU trauma emergency staff was allowed to remain in the room. India winced as she saw him speed dial the one person she feared was Nicole Snipes. The second call he made was even scarier. It was for the local police department. India could feel her legs turn into jelly. She sank into the nearest seat, trembling. Meanwhile, Nicole Snipes was in a state of complete shock after having received the phone call. How could this happen? She had made sure, insisted even, that she had gotten rid of any trace of incompetence in her hospital. How could it happen? She felt like she was living in her worst nightmare. She pinched herself to wake up. She screeched when she felt the sharp pain in her foot. Already a purple bruise was blooming on her skin where her overgrown toenails had left a mark. This was no nightmare, Nicole sighed. It was happening. It was happening all over again. She had no idea what she would do this time. Last time, it took a complete staff overhaul along with the hiring of an expert publicist to clean up the image of the hospital. The NICU nurses were serving their well-deserved time in jail. Nicole Snipes was not a religious woman. However, she despaired as she wondered what she could have done to deserve this torture. It almost felt like divine wrath. Nicole could not help but think of the consequences of this incident and the impact it can have on St. Mark's Baptist Hospital. The entire institution could be shut down. Nicole would lose her jobs, but hundreds of other people who relied on the hospital to make a living would lose their livelihood as well. The hospital could lose its trauma accreditations which would mean that people would have to go out of the local area to get treated for immediate trauma. That would mean spending more taxpayers' dollars on emergency helicopter transport and ambulances. That meant people would not be able to get to the hospital in time if they had a serious life-threatening injury. Nicole's hands felt cold and clammy. She felt a chill run down her spine, even though it was a hot July night. The hospital could be forced to file for bankruptcy, and this would cause major financial damage for the hospital. Nicole desperately craved a stiff drink. However, she knew she had to keep it together to face the facts, and she had to do that stone cold sober. The more Nicole thought about the implications of this incident, the more her head spun. The Baptist Care System Board of Directors, BOD, would surely pay her a visit now. The board was a scary group of rich and powerful people who had initially scorned Nicole's position as CEO because most of them were middle-aged men who did not believe a woman was suited for the role. She changed their minds with her capable strategies and lucrative tactics that raised the esteem of the hospital, so they had kept their mouth shut. However, after the NICU incident, her reputation was delicate, and Nicole knew that the TICU incident could very well be the cut that snaps the thread into smithereens. The only way out of this was to pin the blame on one person. One person had to take the fall for the good of the many. Surely sacrificing one person to save hundreds of jobs, including her own, made sense. Someone had to take the blame, and fast. New policies needed to be mandated quickly. Nicole slowly got dressed in her signature black pencil skirt and tailored black jacket that fit her like a glove. It was her power suit. It made her feel powerful. Putting on matching black heels, she quickly clacked her way down the hall, suddenly stopping before her liquor cabinet. She would have one drink before she left, you know, for courage. It was 4 a.m. when Nicole Snipes pulled into the executive parking lot of St. Mark's Baptist Hospital. A swarm of journalists with video cameras, headsets, and microphones crowded around her. She felt as though she was being swallowed up by the sea of news media, each thrusting their microphones in her face. 
hungry little vultures desperate to be the ones to get the first news bite that escaped her lips. They all wanted to be the first person to question her about the trauma ICU incident. They all started shouting on top of each other. To her, their voices were indiscernible. It just sounded like one big scream as different voices meshed. Nicole could not believe that the news of the patient's death had reached the media already. She knew the shitstorm was coming. She had expected it, but she had not expected it to start raining down upon her so soon. Nicole tried to present a cool front. All your questions will be answered when the proper authorities have completed their investigations. She said crisply, feigning confidence that she did not feel inside. That was not what the press wanted to hear. The question started getting more insistent, urgent, and insane. Does the hospital have a serial killer on the staff? We heard you hired untrained nursing staff. Is that true? Does an ICU nurse think she is the angel of death or something? Each question was stupider than the last, and Nicole felt like she was about to faint. Thankfully, hospital security shoved their way through the crowd, grasped her firmly by the hand, and led her through the crowd. The press shoved cameras up to her flustered face, and she tried to hide in between the two burly security guards that were escorting her inside. Once inside, she felt the familiar burst of the frigid air conditioning on her skin and the sterile smell of disinfectant that emanated through the hospital. And Nicole was relieved. At least the media could not follow her inside. They hovered outside the doors like angry flies, flying glue to a glass window pane. Once inside, Nicole regained her composure and put on her CEO face. There was business to address. She needed to take control of the situation immediately and find a scapegoat within a few hours. Nicole could see the dazed and confused faces of her staff as she walked through the halls. Some looked terrified, others worried and anxious. Chief Operating Officer Eric Rivera approached her in the lobby and escorted her to the executive conference room. They sat down and Eric immediately started updating her about the events of the day. Our security director, Robert Samuels, and I have been conducting our investigation since 2 a.m. He told her, shuffling through some papers in his hands. India Davis, the TICU supervisor, was working the night shift with another nurse, Lisa something. Please do keep in mind that India was severely overworked. Most of the nursing staff had abused their position with the union to take their vacation time for the 4th of July holiday weekend and were deaf to her pleas to postpone their plans. They were quite nasty about it, actually. Rivera sniffed. India, as a TICU supervisor, had to pick up the slack, so she ended up working for 10 straight days with shows on her time card. When Lisa went on her break to get something to eat around midnight, India conducted her patient care rounds. That was when the trouble started. Eric looked pained and looked at Nicole, waiting to see if she would say something. When she did not, he pressed on. Anyway, according to India, all the patients were in agonizing pain. Teenagers who had faced blunt force trauma, she gave them all sedatives according to their medical requirements for their comfort. However, she accidentally gave them the wrong dosage, which led to the deaths of each patient. Nicole was listening to Eric closely. Something about his story did not add up. Eric. She said thoughtfully. If that were the case, she would have noticed a change in the patient's behavior within minutes. She would have seen a change in their vitals because of the beeping machines. She is a well-trained nurse. There is no way these patients could have died on her watch. It just doesn't make sense. She said the last part loudly slapping her hand against the table. You're right, sighed Eric. That should have been the case, but India, exhausted as she was, decided to take a quick nap once she was done with her patient care rounds while Lisa was still on her break. Nicole was fuming. Was she on sedatives herself? She must have been sleeping fucking hard not to hear all the medication alarms blaring throughout the unit. Where is she? Where's India now? She asked furiously. Eric held up his hands defensively to calm Nicole down. Whoa, Nicole, remember, India was working 10 days in a row. Without much help, she was dealing with physical and mental fatigue. It is more work than the most humans are physically capable of doing, but she pushed herself to her limit. When Lisa returned from her break and heard the alarm, she quickly awakened India. India then sat up and noticed that Lisa was calling in security and the charge nurse. Eric sighed again, sadly. India Davis did not deserve this. Wisely, he kept his opinion to himself. Instead, he said, India is in the security director's office right now with the local police. Nicole Snipes smiled like an evil cat. She now had her scapegoat. Nicole had the perfect person to blame, someone who fell asleep on the job. It was not poor India's fault, of course. However, it was a matter of ruining one person's life over her own job and shutting down the entire hospital. Well, the choice was easy to make. 
The rest of the staff would get to keep their jobs. A plan was forming in her mind. Nicole thanked Eric for the information and dismissed him. She quickly left the conference room, walking past the trauma ICU and towards the security director's office. She saw India sitting there, hunched over in her chair, looking miserable. She looked guilty as sin. She was not, though, but Nicole did not really care. She looked the part of a guilty person, and that is what mattered. Nicole called the security director out and explained her plan to him. It was simple, really. All he had to do was ensure that India Davis took full responsibility for the incident. When the board of directors showed up, the incident had to be presented as if it was a simple case of workplace negligence of a single nurse. The hospital had done no wrong. All the equipment was in immaculate condition and functioning perfectly. There were no bad medical procedures and all the doctors had spotless reputations and an excellent track record of saving lives. The correctional plans she had presented to the board six months after the NICU were running effectively and efficiently. Her hospital was perfect. It was India Davis that had messed up. Thank you so much for hanging out with us. If you had fun or picked up anything from this episode, please assist us by hitting the like, subscribe, and notification buttons. You can also comment and share our content. These small things really help our channel and mean a lot to us. Also, special thanks to our Patreon supporters. You guys are the heartbeat of this channel, and we can't thank you enough for being so generous. If you would like to join our Patreon community, please click on the link below. You can contribute as little as $5 per month. You can get all kinds of perks. You can even buy merchandise of your favorite characters at our shop store. Click on the link provided below. That's going to do it for now. Until next time, remember you are cherished by us. So be kind and know that we consider you as family.